Hello, everybody, and welcome to another study in the Word. This is Pastor Tom. I want to thank you for joining me. And before we start today, I want to say a few things. First of all, uh, this video is not intended to be uh, viewed as much as listened to. I'm not really doing too much in the uh, in the sense of television type of uh, uh, production here. It's just simply I'm sitting with my laptop making these. It's a convenient way to do it. So just get your Bible out and study the Word of God. Listen to me, but don't necessarily watch me. I don't know why you'd want to watch my mug anyway. Uh, secondarily, if uh, this is a blessing to you, these series of teachings or any of the teachings that you listen to, please consider uh, going over to our website, faithalivefellowship.org, or you can also go to our other uh, uh, YouTube uh, website, which is FAF Video One, FAF Video One. But our website, faithalivefellowship.org, has a seminar page on there, and it's got free seminars to listen to, and we have lots of these these videos. Um, pray for us, please, and consider also standing with us as a partner. You can go over. We have PayPal. You can make a donation. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, but most of all, we want you to pray for us and please share these videos with somebody who you think this might benefit. Um, we were talking about what causes people uh, to become false uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or even brethren. There's reasons why these things happen. And we were talking in our last session about the importance of character and the importance of understanding the times we're living in. And first, or excuse me, Second uh, Timothy, if you'll get your Bible out and go over to uh, Second Timothy chapter 3. This scripture here shows us very definitely that in the last of the last days that we're, at, that we're in right now, certain traits will uh, be um, really a part of people's lives, if I can use that term. Uh, certain traits will be built in them, sometimes even from their youth and uh, sometimes what happens is is these traits are then uh, when somebody gets saved and even filled with the Holy Spirit uh, brought with them into the church and if not dealt with can uh, set them up for real issues down the road even though you have to understand the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance even though somebody can be highly anointed they have they could have ability to teach preach minister and do things and god can be working on that individual but they can be out in front of people to a certain extent um, and it's really bad if they actually get into full-time ministry and these these traits are still there because satan then can use them now i want to talk about that again let's read the scripture though here just in in the first few verses uh, this know also that in the last days, or the last of the last days, perilous, dangerous times shall come. For men shall be, again, this is this word used here, th this word uh, shall be means the very core of their being will be affected with these personality type of, I guess you could say, habits, sins, destructive behaviors, uh, shall be lovers of their own self. The I.N. generation, remember we, t we talked about that. We talked about putting yourself as really... Uh, God on the throne instead of God. And it goes on and says, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. I think I even dealt with blasphemers and disobedient to parents uh, in my last few sessions. But I want to back up because this word blasphemers is so important. I want to deal with this particular word today in our study. The word blasphemers or blasphemous or blasphemy is a word that is used that is very specific uh, and used many different ways. The word really means to speak out against in its basic form in an evil way. But this word is very pregnant with meanings and it really is an important principle to grasp. So I want to spend some time on that today if we may. This word here, uh, to blaspheme, really means to slander. It, uh, it means to speak out and, and, and to slander one's good name, a person's good name or God's good name. It could be any, any person. It means to speak evil of. Uh, it means to disrespect. Very important that you understand that, disrespect or dishonor. It means when what, what you're saying is not true, but yet you're throwing out these seeds of slander 
our blasphemy against someone, uh, their good name, and your or, and their character, and you're falsely accusing them, whether you uh, whether you know it or whether you don't know it. Because people do this, I'm sure, most of the time from ignorance, and they never do this. By the time I'm done, you'll see why. But first thing to understand is the Bible clearly says that Satan is the accuser or the slander or the blasphemer of the brethren. That's right. He accuses us before God day and night. He accuses us in, in, uh, between one another. Now, one of the things you do not want to do is become a mouthpiece of Satan. Now let me explain this to you because this is really kind of hard for some folks to grasp. You might have to even listen to this one several times because this is pretty heavy stuff, but I want you to think it through with me. Satan uses many times uh, unknowledgeable or even deceived individuals to blaspheme. And I don't think folks uh, take this serious enough. What it says here is very important. Uh, Paul, the apostle, faced this blasphemy against him a lot. Uh, go to Romans chapter 3. Let's look at uh, several of these um, these things here. I want to point out the way this word is used. Now sometimes the word blasphemy is the same Greek word. There's really three Greek words, but it's from the same roots. And it, and it really has different meanings. But it can be translated sometimes differently. It'll be translated as slander, evil speaking, blasphemy. But it means the same thing. Now, in Romans chapter 3, go over there with me. And let's look down here at verse 8. Romans chapter 3 and verse 8. Now, one of the reasons that this is going important to understand is we have such a, um onslaught of dishonor, disloyalty, um, I know as a pastor, now I've been pastoring for many, many years, been in ministry in some way for 35 years, and I can tell you that pastors and leaders, this is the number one area they get attacked in, and it's a horrible uh, thing for any leader to have to be attacked like this. It's, it comes with the territory. It's something everybody who's in leadership understands, but, but you don't want to be a person who does this, and you certainly want to... Uh, when you learn about this, you want to take it seriously, and, and if you have a tendency to do these things, which all of us, uh, I think, uh, you know, one time or another had a tendency to do this, you need to get a hold of it, and you need to just purge it out of your life. It's, it's a very dangerous thing, as we'll see. So in Romans chapter 3, verse 8, it says this, And not rather, as we are slanderously reported, as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. The word damnation there means judgment or punishment. So here somebody was accusing Paul of, of saying that he was using grace, you know, uh, the, the, uh, um, the gospel, the, uh, to say that uh, you can do evil that good may come. And this was not what Paul taught. This is not what Paul believed. This was not even in Paul's character. Uh, and these people were slandering him by speaking and saying these things. They were, they were, they were disrespecting him. They were, uh, uh, their words were sent by Satan to in the the people that were hearing this these particular individuals say this. To, that Paul would be diminished and his authority would be diminished in their eyes. I want you to think about that for a second. Now, so Paul was being accused of saying, thinking, or preaching something that he didn't believe, something he did not think, and something he did not preach. It was a accusation against his character. This was a direct assault by Satan on Paul's character and on Paul's true beliefs that uh, could cause a judgment or punishment on those that were slandering or blaspheming. Now, the Bible says we reap what we sow. This is why this area here is so important to understand. Remember, the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Sometimes when we say something, it's not just that we, you know, uh, that we uh, uh, we use words, but it's how we use them, or it's the intention 
uh, that uh, in, you know that that is is even wrong. Now this word is used uh, in different ways. Again, go to First Corinthians chapter four. I want to I want to read that because this is interesting. I'm just going to give you some illustrations of how the Bible uses this. First Corinthians chapter four, and let's look down here. I hope I got these scriptures written down right. Verse thirteen. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as filth of the world and an offscouring of all things unto this day. Uh, Paul here was talking about the apostles' ministry and what was happening and what happened to him. And, and actually, these are some of the signs of a true ministry. <laughs> One of the signs of a true ministry, and this is unfortunate, is that people will actually... Uh, well, let me back up read verse 10. We are fools for Christ's sakes, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. <laughs> okay. Verse 11. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and buffeted, and we have no certain dwelling place. And laboring, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Okay, the word reviled. And then verse 13, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and an offscouring all things unto this day. He was defamed. That's that word blaspheme. People were slandering him, talking evil against him, putting him down, being disrespectful to this uh, great leader. And it was just came with the territory. But I tell you what, you don't want to be one of these people who do this, you know. I mean, uh, it's it's unfortunate. It, it's part of ministry that we have to put up with. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, those uh, that will listen need to understand this is not something you want to be involved in. So th really what this, part of what this word means here when it's talking about this, Paul talks about it in this verse, it, it means this, to take the respect of someone away. That's what the fame means to to uh, speak words uh, about somebody or to believe something about somebody that causes you to disrespect them or to you used to have respect but because but now you you don't have as much respect. See if the enemy can get you believing that about spiritual leaders that God has put you put in your 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 path your your pastors your leaders others around if he can get you to disrespect them you won't listen to them and you won't uh, allow them to speak into your life you see you'll have they'll be less and less now this is the way it works so so listen to what I'm saying many times Paul didn't deserve this Paul didn't believe th these things Paul didn't do any of them these things they were talking about. Now, I'm sure Paul wasn't uh, perfect. None of us are perfect. But when people start saying and doing things that are uh, directly slanderous or they are blasphemous uh, against somebody or they defame somebody, okay, in any way, shape, or form like this, you see, what it is is the enemy using a person to... Uh, bring about or try to bring about a, a lack of respect or diminishment of respect. So we can see this. Now this is important because this is a very important Bible principle. So it, it's, to, it's to pull somebody back from a ministry. Somebody starts uh, trusting a ministry, listening to a ministry, God places that ministry in your life, and then all of a sudden you hear something. How many times do we hear people uh, innuendos, untruths about ministries, t televangelists, people with ministries? I mean, honestly, I hear it all the time. People are always taking shots on the internet. You hear it all the time. I don't want any part of that. I don't even personally care if somebody's uh, wrong. I'm I'm not going to be part of of tearing them down or 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 slandering them when I don't know them. You know, most of the time this happens. People don't even know you. They don't even know what you believe. We'll talk about that as we go. Now, so this is a a bad trait to have, and so many people have it. <coughs> okay. Now this 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 uh this trait actually, the Bible speaks 
needs to be purged out of anybody who is in leadership or an elder or being trained for ministry. Let's take a look at that because it's real important. Uh, Titus chapter 1. Now, I'll give you a second to get over there because I know you don't uh, probably read Titus all the time. It's an excellent book, like Timothy. I don't use it as much, but I probably should use it more. Like First uh, and Second Timothy, uh, the book of Titus deals, Paul writing to one of his spiritual sons, deals with putting in elders and leadership and so on. And actually, um, it's right after First uh, and Second Timothy in your Bibles. And, it, and it, it talks in great detail about the characteristics uh, that you want in leadership. So one of the characteristics it talks about you want to purge out is this. A person who does this it should not be in leadership. Uh, Titus chapter 1. Let's, let's start reading, say, at verse 6. And just read all the, uh, a few scriptures here. Verse 6, uh, or verse 5. For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and, and ordain elders in every city, as I have appointed thee. If any man be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. So he's giving an illustration of the uh, traits and qualities of an elder. An elder can be anybody, but any fivefold ministry gift would, would have to be uh, live up to this. And, and of course, or a leadership or elders or bishops or pastors, whatever. So he goes through this list. Now, this is really interesting because you go all the way down through this and he talks about all of this down to verse uh, 16 and then in, in, in Titus chapter 2 verse 1 he continues and it says this, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine that the aged men, or these elders, be sober, grave, temperate, sound, faith and charity in patience. And then he goes on and says, The aged women likewise that they may be in behavior as becoming holiness not false now notice this not false accusers there's this this word again here not given to much wine teachers of good things now that word false accusers is a little different but it's the same principle and that they may teach the young woman to be sober so on and so forth but if you go all the way down here to uh uh uh, and he's still talking about this. He's just going through a list and making some comments and context. Uh, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. I wanted to get to this. Put them in mind to be subjected to principalities and powers, to obey ma um, magistrates, to be ready to, uh, uh, to every good work. Now, here it is. To speak evil of no man. Okay? That word speak evil is this word to blaspheme. To speak evil, to... And, and we're not supposed to do that about anybody, you see. No man. So this is really an important issue. Go over to Jude chapter 4. Just go to Revelations and hang a right, or Second Peter and hang a left. If you go to Jude, which is doesn't have any chapters, it's one long chapter, you see this is one of the traits that he speaks of uh, uh, for false apostles or false prophets. Jude chapter 4 verse 8 says, Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil or blaspheme, that's that, that word again, uh, uh, dig, dignitaries. Now you'll find that this is a trait that people have that are false. Now I'm not talking about everybody being a false prophet or apostle, but it's a bad trait. To speak evil against uh, uh, dignitaries or dignity, uh, you know, uh, like uh, presidents or, it doesn't matter. Okay, but especially now you don't want to do this with spiritual leadership. Um, you may not agree, but you don't have to speak evil about them and you, you don't even know them. You may be saying something about them that's not even true. We'll talk about that in a minute. Ephesians chapter 4 is another one. Uh, I want to go over and read that too. Ephesians chapter 4. This is very important that we get a good understanding of this, and I'm going to make some more comments here um, that will help you. I'm going, to, I'm going to teach you a little bit of something. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32 says this. Verse, verse 30 says this. 
And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you sealed in the day of redemption. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking but a pet put away from your mouth with all malice, and be ye kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, uh, even as God has, for Christ's sake, forgiven you. It grieves the Holy Spirit, these type of activities. No question about it. No question about it. Uh, whenever people are speaking evil of me and my wife, we can sense it. It quenches the Holy Spirit in our in our meetings. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but even at church, we can sense it. We know that people are having their own little parties uh, together, little Bible studies, especially when they leave our church or they leave your church or they leave somebody else's church or whatever they do. And they start this um, slander against somebody they don't understand the pastor something he preached most of the time it's not even true what they're saying a lot of times it's it might be taken out of context a thousand different things but they start speaking out and they start doing that to prove that they're more spiritual than the person they really should be sitting under this happens constantly in the body of christ and every pastor out there understands what i'm talking about you sense that that's witchcraft it's, it's one of the most subtle and powerful forms of witchcraft there is because uh, believers' words are so powerful. And this is very, very, gr it grieves the Holy Spirit terribly. But I want you to notice that it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. There's that word again. He's talking about blaspheming here, this slanderous thing. And it really comes out of bitterness. One of the ways you can tell it, that somebody is bitter is they do that. Okay, so that's interesting. Then in 1 Timothy chapter 1, I want you to go to 1 Timothy, not 2 Timothy, but 1 Timothy chapter 1. We see something here that is really interesting. And to show you how dangerous this, this whole area uh, of blaspheme is, of course we know about the blaspheme of the Holy Ghost, don't we? That's extremely different, uh, dangerous. But in 1 Timothy chapter 1, if you go all the way down to the to verse 19 and 20, it says this, Holy faith and a good conscience, which having some put away concerning the faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymes and Alexander, whom I delivered unto Satan. Notice this. Paul said he delivered them unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Now, who were these guys? These were young preachers. <laughs> these were young preachers that Paul was mentoring, and they had begun to blaspheme probably him or other people, they had begun to turn their backs on on the faith because they begin this 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 got into them and they begin to speak out and he had to turn them over to Satan. Now the only other time <laughs> that this this is used is in First Corinthians chapter five. Go over there because I want you to read it yourself. Go over to First Corinthians chapter five. You don't see this much in the New Testament. But this must be pretty important when somebody gets turned over to Satan. <laughs> uh, because in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, it's reported, verse 1, notice, it's reported commonly that there's fornication among you, and such fornication is not even named among the Gentiles, that one should have a father's wife. And you are puffed up and have not mourned that you have uh, that he has done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as an absent in body, but present in the spirit, have judged already as though I was present concerning him that's done this deed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of Jesus Christ. Wow. So here we see that this immoral guy who's committing a uh, fornication with his mother-in-law, which is pretty heavy, I would think, gets turned over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. But here we have a couple of Paul's protégés who were blaspheming, who had to get turned over to Satan for the you know, uh, to, so they learned not to blaspheme. Now this is serious. People blow stuff off. We tend to think. I remember Brother Hagen. One of my spiritual fathers. I heard him say this many times. He said uh, that he had a vision when Jesus appeared to him one time. Jesus was talking to him and said this to him. I will judge men faster on spiritual sins than physical sins sometimes. And see what, because what the church does is we, uh, we, ten, we have a tendency to judge people and uh, on, on physical sins. You know, smoking and drinking and cussing and, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
uh, just just physical things that they do, but really some of these spiritual things that we're talking about, like attitudes and blasphemy, are very dangerous, much more dangerous than those kind of sins because they carry with it destructive behavior that affects so many people and takes away what we're talking about right now anyway, from the legitimacy of somebody's ministry or uh, the character of somebody. Now, this is heavy, and, and I mean, you know, honestly, I've got to tell you a couple stories. I'm not telling you these stories to try to draw attention to myself, but have I ever uh, um, seen people involved in blasphemy um, against me, myself, and I? <laughs> okay, because I don't know how to, I've seen it so many times in, in, in many people's lives, not just my life, other pastors, leaders, and I'm sure just in your life, you've had people uh, slander you, okay, all of us have experienced it, but I want to give you some, um, some uh, uh, examples, um, I have character flaws, I'm not perfect, all right, you could find them if you dig, but the truth of the matter is, what people want is they want to, if they want somebody perfect, a perfect human being to mentor them or speak into their life, you'll never find one. What you don't want to do is ridicule, ridicule somebody or take away from somebody or allow Satan to take away from somebody uh, in your eyes or the eyes of others their character when what you're saying is not true. It's slanderous. As an example, um, I had, uh, at one time in my life, several individuals, four or five individuals that I, me and my wife poured our hearts into, uh, spiritual sons and daughters. We worked with them closely. We lived with them uh, at times. We preached with them. We mentored them. We counseled them. We spent hours with them. We poured everything we had into them. We poured our lives and our hearts. We befriended them. We loved their children. We preached and teach and taught and counseled and did everything we possibly could to help them. Now, I'm sure somewhere in that, that range of time that we were with them, they saw things in me and my wife that weren't perfect. But our hearts were sincerely trying to help them. Everything went great until I decided one day uh, by the leading of the Lord that I had to leave and I put them in charge of certain ministries just like Paul had put uh, these guys in charge I'm sure of certain things in ministry and they were being trained and when I did everything went fine until one of the people's wives began to slander me they begin to talk, and this person begin they, they begin to meet, and they begin to talk, and, and they use what they perceived as character flaw, and they begin to get into unreasonable slander. Things about me and my wife that we didn't believe, things we did not even ever do. We were honestly, uh, was not our intent to ever do. We would have never done in a million years. If any, if you knew on the inside of me and my wife what we were wanting and thinking and doing, it would have been the opposite of what they started to believe about us. This, this thing opened the door to an Absalom spirit. It opened the door to a Jezebel spirit. And it began to operate amongst them to the point to where they begin to even leave the faith. The very things that I have taught them, they begin to leave that, uh, the, the faith of the, in the Word of God, the, the, uh, the uh, faith in the moving of the Holy Spirit and all of that. They begin, in these people had churches and, and were involved in ministry with us. They begin to pull back because this activity, the slanderous activity, it grieved the Holy Spirit so bad that eventually the consequences of this horrible thing, and it was a, one of the hardest things that I've ever personally experienced in my life, because when you pour your heart into people and they do that kind of thing to you, and you're an innocent victim, you can pray, you can do all of this, but you know it's coming. You know that eventually it's going. They are going to, like Paul said, it's it. it they're opening up the door to the enemy. What happened to them? 
Well, none of them are in ministry anymore. I can tell you this. They've been, some of them have been through divorces. They're not married anymore. Their families are goofed up. Uh, different things. But it, it's not good. And it never is good. When you're attached to somebody especially, and you're attached to them as a, uh, they've fathered you in the faith or, or something like that, one of the worst things and the most dramatic errors that I've ever seen people get involved in is this kind of activity. You need to watch it like a hawk. You need to constantly monitor your mind. Let me give you another one. Here's an example of somebody in ministry that never got this in order, didn't understand the principle. I remember I was uh, in, new in a certain area. And in our ministry, my wife and I operate very powerfully in specific areas. Signs and wonders and things happen in our ministry that are unusual, but they're real, really of God. We get that lots of people are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and healed and delivered in our meetings. That's just the way it's always been that way. When we came into this particular area and started a new church, we were doing it by the leading of the Holy Spirit and by the unction of the Lord. But when the pastor, who was a pastor of a full gospel church, that was the largest largest church in that portion of the city where we were uh, now uh, starting a church, by the leading of God, found out that some of his people had decided to leave his church and come over to my church. And one of the reasons they were leaving is because, as an example, one lady was healed of a brain tumor and delivered from devils. And... Um, Different people had received healings and deliverances, and they just weren't getting fed there. And I ask, as I always do, for them to go to their pastor and talk to the pastor and to leave the right way, which they did. But when he began to hear this, and more and more people began to, to leave that church and come over amongst us, I heard him begin to blaspheme me. Now, uh, this is what he did. He literally got up from the pulpit and told people, not to uh, um, go to my church because I was a false prophet, I was an, a false apostle. This man never knew me. He didn't know who I am. He, he, he said we didn't have any character. Everything that was happening was wrong. And that if you went over there, you get caught up in deception. And he began to do that, and he had his elders do that. And uh, they would get up, and they would actually, from the pulpit, do this in front of hundreds of people in our in this city. I heard about this and immediately I knew I had to get to this man. Not only did I need to protect myself and uh, I not only did I need to protect my family and you know what, what people were saying which was which was blasphemous. I I realized that this man was 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 doing something this these people were doing something that would open them wide up to an attack from the devil that could destroy them, literally. And so I tried to make a, an appointment with this man. It took me, I don't know how long. They would not, would not, would not. And finally, I got in there. Me and my wife went in. When, when we went in to meet with this person, I'll never forget it. This man and his wife were sitting there. Now, you have to understand, folks, this is a pastor of the largest full gospel church in that area. They had been very successful in some some ways in ministry. They had a good group of people. They were excellent in worship, but they had never developed in this area, and they didn't understand it. It was very apparent. When I sat down with this man, I, I'll never forget it. Me and my wife talk about it every once in a while. It was like the atmosphere was so thick, and it wasn't with the glory, that you could have cut it with a knife. This man... I started to explain to him that God had called me to come there and that I would never in my and never would I try to proselyte people out of somebody's church. I don't do that. But before I could even get into any of that and make any kind of peace with this man, he cut me off. And you know what he told me? He said this, I'm the apostle over this area. And since I'm the apostle over this area, anybody that comes into the area ought to submit to me. He said this to me, me and my wife. He said, if you have anything from God, and it's really of God, you should come and you should sit down 
under my ministry and if I feel like you have the character and you have the goods I then can release you into some type of ministry. I'm tired, he said, of all these small churches starting up around the city when they all should be in my church because I, God has given me the city and I am the apostle of this city. Now, this is what this man said to me. I don't know where people get these ideas. I don't know how people get these ideas. But this is, this is one of the most ridiculous things I have ever heard anybody do. We could get nowhere with this person. We walked out of there, and I tell you what, I had to go to pray and just, just to walk in love with this person. Well, this man had a very large church, and over a period of about a year to two years after that, he had a church split. He ended up in terrible financial problems. His denomination sued him. He almost lost his marriage. He dwindled down to about 30 people, then it split down to just 10, 15 people. He ended up going to work for a ministry that ended up having a big scandal in their ministry, and it was just one thing after another. Some of the people in his congregation that were his elders, they ended up divorced. And one person that uh, ended up uh, uh, you know, getting involved with this group of people who were really strong into the prophetic thing, and, and this, they were in with, with the wrong group of people. I'm not going to even say who it was, but it was a wrong group of people. They began to proclaim over them that they were prophets of the Lord. They were not prophets of the Lord. They did, they, they shouldn't have had even been in ministry, period. Man was driving down the road. He had a family, and he was killed instantly in a car crash. This just went nowhere good. It, it, it split the church. It's still going on today. People are still reeling from what happened. This all started because he began to blaspheme me and blaspheme against what God was doing, the anointing of God on my life and what was God was doing in my life. And he didn't even realize what he was doing. I'm sure he didn't or he wouldn't have done it. I'm not, I'll give you one more and I'm going to conclude with this. This is how dangerous this can be. Somebody can actually become a false accuser or a false prophet by doing this to somebody else who has really been sent by God to help them. I remember Brother Hagen talking about this one time. Let me give you an illustration. There was a man that he was ministering in a, a particular city that was in the denomination that he was in at the particular time. And all of the churches except his hooked up with him in this particular meeting. I'm talking about Brother Hagen. And they came. Brother Hagen was preaching on faith and different things. This particular man did not agree with Brother Hagen. Now, it's one thing not to agree with somebody, but he began to speak out against Brother Hagen, actually put things in a magazine and different thing, or a, excuse me, newspaper against the meetings and, and called them false and this and so on and so forth. Well, you know, Brother Hagen had these great meetings. He knew who the man was, and this man just didn't, didn't wasn't involved. Um, came back. Uh, Brother Hagen left, and this man got cancer or some kind of disease. I can't remember exactly what I think it was cancer or something, and was literally dying. Now, this man was calling out to God because he did believe in healing, but Jesus appeared to him and said, if you're going to get healed, you're going to have to apologize to Brother Hagen, have him come pray for you. You're not going to get healed, healed any other way. He did. He called for Brother Hagen. Brother Hagen forgave him, prayed for him, and he was totally healed. You see, God has sent Brother Hagen to help this man, but this man had rejected his ministry because he had heard or somehow got the ideas about Brother Hagen that were not true. How many times I've heard that on the internet, I can't tell you. I was in a ministry one time in Elko, Nevada. And in Elko, Nevada, we were ministering. There was a church there, a pastor there, a full gospel pastor, that was pastoring this particular church in Elko, Nevada. And literally, people started coming to our meetings from his church, and he came, and he was sitting in our meetings. Well, he got, he got uh, offended by something that happened in the meetings, because in his eyes, and his reasoning was, if God was moving, people were going to come up to the front of the church and repent and get their hearts right with God, but all he saw in the meetings was a lot of joy. Now, people were saved filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, delivered. He did not know me. He didn't know anything about me. He didn't even know what I believed. 
He never talked to me. He never asked me any questions. But what he did is got up in front of his congregation and began to blaspheme me. Began to blaspheme what was going on. Began to come against me. From that moment on that he did that, all of a sudden his life spiraled out of control. He lost everything, including his church. Now, he could have repented and he could have got it right. But you see, most of the time when people do that type of activity, it's something deep inside a characteristics of this last days that has never been corrected. We need to be very careful the way we treat one another. And we need to understand that this blasphemy thing is very dangerous. Don't you be involved in it, especially against the Holy Spirit, but against anybody that's in authority. Whether you agree with them or don't, you can always talk about what you you know, don't agree, you can preach about it. I do that. But I certainly don't want to blaspheme people, especially if I don't know them, don't know what they believe, don't know what they're teaching, don't know what's going on. Don't want to be an accuser of the brother. Until next time, God bless you. I love you. We're praying for you.